Hey, this is Anthony Hoff from TechCrunch. I'm here with Michael Zagorsik from Leap Motion, and um, a company that we've actually written about a bunch, but I at least haven't actually had a chance to see it in action, but we are about to change that. Um, so Michael is going to give us a, a tour of, of a couple different things. Um, so what's the first thing we're going to look at? Sure. What we have here um, is uh, what we call the visualizer. I mean, what, we really focus on creating amazing tools for software developers to create amazing apps. I mean, that we provide the technology and the platform, and what we what we give them is this way to really visualize the type of thing the Leap Motion Controller sees. So you can see it's tracking all of my five fingers, right. and how quick. And just and to make sure, so for people who are kind of watching, like, so there's the the, the 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 device is kind of right under your hands. Exactly. What it is, it's this tiny device that is um, plugs in via USB and creates a detection field that's basically two by two by two. So you can see it's tracking my fingers all the way across, up and down, even right down above the device. And uh, this visualizer helps everybody see what the Leap Motion Controller sees. So, and what's great is that it's quick and it's really precise. So I can get, I can get in there really, really close and you can see how subtle my movements are. And then the last thing that's really important about it is that as I move around, it's really actually tracking my motions in 3D. So you really get a sense of that space in front of your computer. And again, this is not to mean that the consumers use this is more sort of a showcase for developers so they can exactly. understand the technology. Right. So the developers say, okay, I understand how the Leap Motion Controller works. I understand what it sees. And then they can start making some really cool stuff, which we can take a look at. Let's take a look at the apps. Okay, great. Well, one that we've been showcasing a lot um, is, uh, for example, something like Fruit Ninja, which is um, pretty easy to, uh, to really see. And we've got this out in the experience, and it's been <laughs> quite a hit um, okay. where... Uh, I can uh, very simply grab something like a tool or a chopstick and play um, something that was originally a touch game, but I can play it so much more easily and smoothly. I'm on a big screen. I can cover the entire screen with just a flick of the wrist instead of dragging my finger across. And it's so quick that um, I can, I can uh, cover and, and snap fruit in half, basically. Without Does that mean that, that, that we've made, now made the game a little too easy? Um, you know, I never thought of it that way. It's possible. Um, it definitely, we're getting a lot of interest across the board, and I think what we're going to see is apps that were existing apps that work uh, really well or better with the Leap Motion Controller, or we're going to actually see stuff that nobody could ever do before. Right, right. So in this, I mean, is, is part of what you're illustrating the idea that you could also that that when we talk about, I mean, I mean, people think about it as sort of using your hands, but actually you could be sort of using other kind of things Absolutely. as well. Yeah, the Leap Motion Controller can recognize objects and tools, so I can do it just as easily with my fingers. And it can actually detect tools in a way that um, you can assign properties to them. So if I'm, uh, uh, we have a demonstration with Corel Painter, for example, and uh, you could actually program different brush sizes to actually correlate with um, different types of paint. Um, that's something that's uh, definitely interesting on the roadmap because the Elite Motion Controller can detect right. the idea that it's right. a tool versus a finger versus something big versus something small. Huh. So, I mean, that's probably a good segue to, I think, the last thing we were going to look at, which yeah. was also art-related, if I'm not mistaken. Absolutely. So let me quit out of here. And once again, uh, and I'll, I'll pull this up here for you guys. Um, this is, this really embodies in many ways what the controller is about. So you actually see an interesting space very similar to the visualizer, but I'll, I'll, I'll remove this grid and I'll change some of the controls. And this, again, this is a, uh, a good demonstration to see what um, what you can do, and, and really something that you couldn't do before. So I have this essentially piece of clay or uh, a cylinder of wax, and I can re reach into my computer with a tool or with my finger, and I can actually mold it and, and using that direct manipulation. There's no user interface, it's just me uh, interacting directly with this environment, and I can, I can again, mold using either hand, even control, the position of it really easily, and I can really get into different type of. So, are you, are you trying to make something right now, or are you just illustrating? The, just an illustration. Okay, because um, I thought you were maybe doing a really uh, bad job. Uh, I was. Uh, well, yeah, I'm not finished yet. Um, <laughs> okay, that's but, fair. Uh, yeah, I can't promise consistency with the end result, but um, it's uh, what you get is is really the sense that I'm truly able to control my environment, and you can change physical properties. So I can, instead of pushing things in, I can actually start pulling things out. So oh. what's incredible is that what uh, you could essentially do in a few minutes in the real world, you can now do in a computer. Without this type of control, the amount of uh, software and um, knowledge to create something as elegant and simple as molding clay would uh, require training and tools and understanding, whereas now I can do something like this as effortlessly as I would in real life, which is, is really the ultimate manifestation of that. So we're going to see apps that are 
uh, simple and fun to truly immersive experiences. We want to cover the spectrum. Cool. Well, thanks for showing it to us. Um, I think we're going to go talk to one of the other Michaels now about sure. the uh, company. But uh, thanks again. Okay, great. Thanks, guys. Hey, this is Anthony Howe with TechCrunch again. I'm here with uh, one of the other Michaels at Leap Motion, Michael Buckwald, the CEO. Um, so we just saw a demo of the technology, which was, I mean, really, really cool. So where are you actually in terms of getting this into the hands of consumers? So we've given uh, 12,000 units to developers that are working on uh, amazing next-gen applications. And uh, they're also acting as a great beta test group. Uh, so. We'll be shipping the units to uh, customers who ordered uh, at leapmotion.com on May 13th, and then uh, going into retail outlets, including Best Buy, on May 19th. And you feel pretty confident about those dates? We're pretty confident. I, I mean, ultimately, our number one priority, of course, is the quality of the product. And mm -hmm. uh, there are a lot of things happening simultaneously uh, from a logistical perspective. We have to manufacture hundreds of thousands of devices bring them into the United States, bring them into Europe, distribute them to people. So there is a lot that has to happen, but uh, we have a great team in place and we want to get this out to the people that have uh, ordered as quickly as possible. So you mentioned you know, you've already had this in the hands of lots of different developers. Um, what are some of the, the things, and, but who are also serving as beta testers? Are there sort of surprises in terms of how they're actually using it? Have they managed to like break things you weren't expecting to break or done cool things you weren't expecting? Yeah, developers have done uh, all sorts of cool things that we weren't expecting. I think uh, you're going to see a really wide breadth of applications at launch. Uh, everything from casual games to uh, things like first-person shooters where each hand controls a gun and then there's also a melee mode with a punch that is not just a binary did you punch or didn't you punch, but is based on how powerful and the angle. Uh, things like uh, plugins for popular professional software like AutoCAD and Maya, and then also lots of stuff in the middle. Things intended to help regular people create things in a fun, powerful way for the first time. So I think one of the things we were actually talking about earlier, and luckily that was not captured on camera, was my sort of early feeble attempts at, at playing Cut the Rope, partially because I've, I've never actually played Cut the Rope before, which is an embarrassing thing also to admit. Um, but that, you know, there was this moment where I was trying to go up, but instead of sort of just going forward, and, and I think you and I were talking about that, and you were, and that you know, in some ways going up to go up seems more intuitive, but on the other hand, there's a certain amount of, you know, ways that we've learned to think about computer interaction that maybe we have to sort of unlearn in some ways. Yeah, we really believe that interacting with a computer should be as similar to interacting with the real world as possible. So, uh, people have an incredible ability to reach out and grab things and this intuition that's been developed over uh, thousands of years, but uh, potentially in some cases, uh, it's been confused uh, or unlearned by keyboard, mice, indirect input mechanisms, touch screens. Uh, but I, I think that usually takes people only a few seconds uh, to recalibrate. Uh, and ultimately, that sort of deep, hardwired, instinctual ability to just reach out and grab an object in 3D space, because the real world is 3D, uh, that wins out. Mm -hmm. um. So when you kind of look ahead and like sort of allow, I mean, because obviously just, I mean, the, the basic idea, this is, you know, not a small startup idea. So when, when you sort of think big and look, you know, say five years ahead, what do you, how, how, how do you sort of see where Leap in Motion is at that point? So we think that anywhere there's a computer, uh, people will benefit from integration with Leap. So uh, today we're building a peripheral and marketing it directly to consumers. We're very interested in embedding this technology in uh, everything from laptops to tablets, and then uh, even more excited about things like head-mounted displays, uh, ways that by no longer requiring a keyboard or a mouse or a touchscreen, uh, the computer, in terms of its form factor, can change in really fundamental ways. Uh, so you can imagine someone interacting with a uh, head-mounted display uh, with their hands in their field of vision. How is that? Is that something that you guys are sort of actively testing, or that's more just like, well, we'd like to get there at some point? I, I think that it's a space where there's a lot of excitement and energy. Obviously, Google Glass has gotten a right. lot of publicity, uh, and there are there are many other companies, both startups and entrenched players, that are working in that space. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I think it's it's it is going to be uh, inevitable. It's just a question of when and. Mm -hmm. 
I think the biggest thing holding it back today is the fact that there isn't a good input mechanism because you, you can't try to have something that is immersive but then require the person to detach themselves from their head mounted display and use a keyboard on their arm. Uh, so uh, I think that leap in technology is likely will enable those form factors. And, and so in terms of that technology, I mean, like you said, the, the, the sort of the challenge is, you know, the, the input mechanism, but actually one of the things you, you actually mentioned earlier is also you think of yourselves more as, that more of the magic at least is sort of in the software than in the hardware. Um, but there is sort of a strong hardware component. Can you just talk a little bit about how those pieces fit together, you know, in terms of what you're doing? Yeah, so we are taking uh, heavily customized, but uh, still essentially off-the-shelf hardware and combining it with very unconventional software and uh, essentially an approach to motion sensing that has never been used before in academia or industry and uh, together tracking motion with 200 times the accuracy of something like the Kinect and really low latency and uh, those two things fit together really nicely. It's, it is always for us hardware time software and because when we were starting out creating this we didn't have any leverage over the hardware ecosystem. Right. It was very much software, but uh, it's really exciting because obviously along the way we've been thinking about all the things we could do if we had hardware influence, and now we're in a position where we have hundreds of thousands of pre-orders and we have hardware companies coming to us and saying, what do you want us to modify? So uh, in the future, the scales might balance a little bit, although the software side is going to keep getting better and better as well. Great. Well, thanks a lot for your time, and congrats on, on the progress so far, and hopefully we'll start seeing uh, a lot more soon. Yeah, thanks for stopping by.